Help it. From the illegal dumping of toxic waste to financial cutbacks, we count 15 facts you didn't know about the elusive Area 51. Number 15. Accidental Disclosure Area 51 is the best-known secret military base of operations in the world, but a 1967 government memo is the only reason we know of its existence at all. Protocol meant that all references to Area 51 had to be redacted from all documents, but curiously in this memo, which was sent by CIA Director Richard Helms and concerned the deployment of surveillance aircraft in Vietnam, one reference slipped through. The mistake didn't reach the public, but the question stands, was this leak really accidental? Number 14. U-2 spy plane involved in first Area 51 operation. Area 51 first began as a testing ground for the Lockheed U-2 spy plane, a famous aircraft developed after World War II that was designed to carry out surveillance over the Soviet Union. Practice flights took place on Area 51's runways, which were built on a dried-out lake bed. A cover story was whipped up for its first operations over Eastern Europe. It was like totally a weather research plane. You see that pretty cloud up there? Looks an awful lot like a Soviet nuclear bunker. <clears throat> I mean, uh, it looks like a pretty kitty cat. The most famous U-2 incident occurred in May 1960, and I don't mean the time that Bono drank too much and lectured everybody about global warming. An Area 51 spy plane crashed over the Soviet Union during an intelligence gathering flight. That must have been an awkward discovery. Hey, this weather plane has a bunch of pictures of our nuclear bunkers. Though they did get a bunch of U-2 spy plane parts and verification that we're spying on them, so they probably weren't that upset. Well, you know, outside of the whole being spied on part anyways. Number 13. U.S. Army accused of using toxic substances at Area 51. Some reports suggest that the military took advantage of the secrecy surrounding Area 51 and the confidentiality agreements required of its workers to dump large amounts of toxic waste at the site. When some workers died, their widows revealed evidence of large drums of hazardous waste being dumped in trenches and set on fire. The ensuing court case was dismissed because of national security considerations. There were also claims that other military sites toxic waste was illegally disposed of at Area 51 because the location was so remote. Apparently, the base is exempt from any environmental laws. Number 12. First Drone Test Flight The first recorded test flight of an unmanned drone occurred at Area 51 in 1964. Nowadays, drones are a commonplace. The U.S. military openly uses them, and there's always one weirdo in every neighborhood using them to spy on his neighbors. But the development actually began several decades ago. The first drone was the D-21, and it was intended to be used for surveillance. It took a couple of years to become capable of independent flight, but by 1966, the D-21 model had flown to heights of 90,000 feet. However, during its fourth test flight, something went wrong when the drone was set free from its carrier plane and both aircrafts were destroyed, killing one crew member. Of course, we're only now hearing about it cause cover up. You wouldn't want those red ruskies to get their hands on our drones. Number 11. Foreign aircrafts were present at the base. The United States used Area 51 to test capture technology sourced from enemy nations' aircrafts. The first foreign plane to arrive was a Russian-built MiG-21, which had been captured by Israeli forces in 1966 when a member of the Iraqi Air Force defected. The purpose of the investigations was to identify weaknesses in performance and design so the U.S. forces could exploit them during combat. In 1970, further Area 51 examinations commenced, this time on secretly acquired Soviet radar systems. Some speculate this manner of examination continues, with the intergalactic spacecraft supposedly being kept somewhere within the compound. Number 10. Until 2013, the CIA refused to acknowledge the existence of Area 51 in official documents because the U.S. government considered the work undertaken at the base to be too sensitive. You know what? That's okay. I still don't acknowledge the Star Wars prequels either. This secrecy contributed to the base's elusive nature and no doubt fed the hundreds of myths surrounding it. At first, all the secrecy was caused by the Cold War. Washington was super paranoid that its military programs would fall into the hands of the Soviet Union. To be fair, it would have been pretty shitty if that happened, so paranoia warranted. Area 51's existence was finally admitted in a classified report that covered the first two decades of operations at Area 51. This was released in 2013 following a Freedom of Information request by a professor at George Washington University. Obama also made an offhand comment about Area 51 in 2013, making him the first president to publicly acknowledge its existence. Number 9. Photos were once inadvertently taken of the base. During a flight on board NASA's Skylab space station in 1974, a pack of rookie astronauts inadvertently took photos of Area 51. The incident triggered a national security debate, with some commanders, including William Colby, the director of the CIA at the time, considering prematurely acknowledging the base's existence. Declassified documents revealed that Area 51 was the only site in the entire world that the CIA had banned from being photographed from space. 
This tells you how valuable the work they were doing there was. You take a picture of the back of our base and you might just get a visit from our old buddy MK Ultra. Number 8. Area 51's aliases. During its initial construction, Area 51 was referred to by the codenames Groom Lake, Watertown, the Edgar Allan Poe inspired Dreamland, and finally Paradise Ranch. It's unclear if Michael Jackson had a hand in any of these naming decisions, but if he did, the movie thriller would make a whole lot more sense. The idea behind Paradise Ranch is that it would make the job appear more desirable to the contracted construction workers. Personally, I don't see why this was necessary. I mean, months of backbreaking labor in the remote Arizona desert definitely sounds like my idea of a good time. I mean, they got an entire lake, there's no water in it, and you're gonna be building an airfield there, but you know, that's apples and oranges, it's a lake, enjoy it. Coincidentally, Paradise Ranch is also the name of a campy Korean TV drama. I wonder if it tells the story of Area 51's construction. It certainly looks like it. Number 7. Entertainment Options at Area 51 If you're planning a nice getaway to Area 51, you may want to pack a few books because you're gonna be bored. Insiders have revealed that early on, the only entertainment options at Area 51 were a single cement tennis court and a small bowling alley. There was no TV, and radio signals only made it through the surrounding mountains at night. The good news, however, is that the Area 51 workers ate pretty well. The mess halls sometimes served lobsters and oysters, and they enjoyed a once-a-week steak night. Mm-mm, nothing like a bunch of oysters after dumping a bunch of toxic waste into a trench and lighting it on fire. Number 6. Financial Woes Though it may be hard to believe, even a facility as important as Area 51 was not spared by the economic downturn. It's estimated that somewhere between 1,600 and 2,000 employees work at the base with at least a dozen regular defense contractors as of 2013. This employment figure is 200 to 400 less than it was in 2012. The matter of Area 51's finances and spread of resources remains, you guessed it, classified. Maybe a smartly placed lemonade stand can turn their fortunes around. The real question is, how do they keep all those people that they fired to shut up? When I quit my old high school job, I told everybody about all the dumb bullshit we did. Did you know that a trash compactor the size of a bus can be completely destroyed by a box of CDs? Well, now you know. But thinking about it, that was a video rental store. If I did that at Area 51, I'd probably find myself inside of a trash compactor at some point. Number 5. Next Gen Spy Plane Rumors New satellite data appears to indicate that a major new project is underway at Area 51. Being built at the end of one of the runways is a large hangar-like building. According to defense journalist Tyler Rogoway, the U.S. Air Force has admitted to the existence of a long-range unmanned surveillance aircraft currently in the prototype stage. This is the most likely candidate for testing in the new hangar. The new hangar appears to have massive doors that are approximately 170 feet wide, suggesting they've been specifically constructed to deal with large objects like aircraft or dinosaurs. Number 4. Hoax Moon Landing Twist It's no secret that hordes of people believe that America faked the moon landing in an effort to win the coveted space race. Many believe that the staged event took place at Area 51, which is ground zero for all wild conspiracy theories. But while it is a conspiracy theory, there is a sliver of evidence that supports it. A large assortment of space equipment, including land rovers and life support systems, were discovered at Area 51's nuclear testing grounds. It's likely these were used for test purposes by astronauts, possibly to test their endurance to radiation, but it's still kind of suspicious. I mean, if we went to the moon, then why can't I get some moon cheese? I really want to make a moon witch. Who doesn't want a moon witch? Number 3. Crashed A-12 Spy Plane The A-12 is a supersonic spy plane that was developed and tested behind Area 51's Black Curtain. It was nearly undetectable to radar and could cross the continental USA in just 70 minutes, capturing footage at an impressive 90,000 feet. However, pushing the limits of aviation came with risk, and it eventually led to a catastrophic crash outside of Area 51 in 1963. When remnants of the crash day 12 were discovered in Utah, the CIA decided to declassify and publish photos of the plane. Reportedly, pilot Ken Collins had parachuted to the ground where he was stunned to meet three civilians in a pickup who offered him a ride to the wreckage of his secret plane. Collins instead got them to take him in the opposite direction by telling them that the plane had a nuclear weapon on board. This was a pre-arranged cover story to keep the craft secret and demonstrates the links officials were willing to go to. Though if it happened today, you'd get pictures on Twitter and everybody freaking out about a nuke in Utah. Number 2. Alien Reports In 1952, a dramatic spike in UFO sightings had the CIA acknowledging the remote possibility that interplanetary aircraft were at play. The government took the phenomenon seriously and investigated each sighting. 90% of reported sightings were easily debunked, weather balloons and whatnot, but the other 10% were categorized as incredible reports from credible observers. Over half of the UFO reports from the late 50s through to the swing in 60s were accounted for by manned reconnaissance flights over the United States. Pretty much all of these originated from Area 51. 
Despite the logical explanations, many still claim that alien aircraft are being stored at Area 51 and they're being reverse engineered to create new aircraft and weapons. A recent poll revealed that more than 70% of Americans believe that UFOs are real. The number that believes in unicorns remains unconfirmed. Number 1 Area 51 may have tested the helicopters using the Bin Laden raid. The plot to assassinate Osama Bin Laden in 2011 was carried out by a team of Navy SEALs who were flown to the Pakistan location by two Black Hawk helicopters. However, when one crashed during the mission, aviation experts identified that this was no ordinary helicopter. Some speculate that it was a heavily modified Black Hawk, while others claim it was a new model, perhaps custom built for the mission. It's believed that the testing ground for this new chopper would have been Area 51. Supposedly, the helicopter is considered to be nearly invisible to radar. Judging by the mission's success, this aircraft was obviously much harder to detect than its predecessors. Though the fact one crashed means it probably needs a little bit more time in Arizona. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.